We are now hearing that Carl Icahn, the billionaire investor, declined to join the Trump Economic Advisory Council. You've been hearing all those names today. Instead, Mr. Icahn, considering funding his own super PAC that's focused on regulatory reform. Charlie Gasparino's here on this. Um, I saw those names, Steve Moore, on and on all these right, people right, right. and said, why isn't Carl Icahn on the list? Um, good question. I, what I know about Carl is he's the type of guy that doesn't like to get too close to the sun, so to speak. I mean, you know, he's... Uh, you know, he, he, he does some TV. Um, I don't think he wants to be directly in, involved in Donald's campaign. I think, I, I don't know, even know if he's written a check yet. You know, right. he's got a lot of money to write checks. Carl's well, we worth kept $20 billion. The Treasury Secretary, yeah. all this. Kind um, of listen, I, my guess is that some of the controversy some, uh, surrounding the campaign uh, is, uh, you know, is getting to him. And uh, I will say this it, it was, it's funny because. Uh, um, Carl said that he found out that he was a major supporter and possibly a treasury secretary for Donald Trump while he was, he told me this, while he was watching TV one night. So he wasn't exactly like right. embracing the whole thing right up front. He likes Donald. He, th he thinks he'd be a good president. He's supporting him. But I think, you know, Carl's the type of guy that, that is very careful. And I think, uh, you know, until he sees much more substantive uh, stuff out of Donald regarding well, economics, which we're going to get on Monday. Probably. Speaking of which, what right. are you hearing about that? Well, you know, that's Monday. interesting. We have some interesting ex uh, exclusive news uh, from, from from people close to the Trump campaign. Now, we should point out, just as John Roberts saying that Trump might is likely to endorse uh, Paul Ryan, but right, you knows, never know. But who knows what what happens? I, I know someone who's seen a draft of the speech. Uh, the speech is going to be very heavy on on his tax plan, so it's, that's good. A lot of people are saying get back to taxes, right. and how high taxes and high regulation is squeezing this economy despite today's positive jobs growth we should put out that you know under uh, the, the labor participation rate is still pretty lousy you know wage growth has gone up but it's still nothing compared to what you know what, what we need right. uh, this is you know unemployment is flat I mean this, this is still not a great economy and I think you're gonna see him attack uh, Hillary Clinton and the Obama economic record at least that's in the, the draft as of today, okay? okay, very heavy on regulations, very heavy on taxes. And here's something that I think is going to be interesting. The draft, as of today, involves banks and bank regulation. He's going to say he need, we need our banks to lend. We also uh, need not to have another financial crisis. And, you know, I will tell you this. I know for a fact that Donald Trump put in, personally put in, the Republican plank, the return of Glass-Steagall, which had separated yeah. uh, investment and commercial banking before the Clinton administration when they got rid of it and they allowed Citigroup, the mega bank, to, to be created. A lot of people believe that's where you can trace the start of the financial crisis because these mega banks were, you know, huge. and, and So he personally believes in that. He personally he believes to, in yeah, that. Okay. From what I understand, he'll either mention Glass-Steagall specifically or he'll say everything about it, but he's going to talk about a banking system where maybe banks are made smaller, broken up, but but the regulations come off as they're made smaller. And I think, you know what, that's a very, very smart thing to say because that was, in my view, Glass-Steagall did push the risk taking to another level. Right. So you have, uh, yeah, you have a less risky situation, people argue. You might have smaller that. banks, right? but, but, they're late, but they're able to lend at least. Right. That's know? a big debate we all had right. after 08, and then right. maybe we'll have it again if he brings it up. But I do think politically it's interesting what you're telling us here is that he'll, he'll focus on taxes, he'll focus right. on regulation. To me, that says there won't be as, uh, as a gigantic a focus as there has been on trade, which only gets him so far. In a place like Pennsylvania, well, there are a lot of people that would vote for him based on that, but there are, very, there are many others I'm, I'm in sure the suburbs listen, that want to hear something different. I'm sure he's going to up trade. He's going to be in no, Detroit, I know, but right? He needs to broaden it out. Right. But point. I think he will broaden it. Listen, according to the draft as of now, trade will be there, I guess. But the, the, name, the stuff that I heard that stood out to me was bank regulations, huh. how breaking up, making the banks smaller, but ability to lend. And it's fascinating. It's going to be an interesting debate because he put in the Republican plank. And people didn't realize this. He put in the Glass-Steagall provision to bring back Glass-Steagall, which effectively breaks up commercial. Takes, you know how banks are together, both yes. the commercial and investment banking. He wants to break that apart. A lot of people say that created the tox, the the the, the, the road to toxicity it's also that led to the financial crisis. A, an issue that kind of uh, I think it resonates with with people who you know Wall Street's not the most popular place in the world. So if your if your political argument is basically, hey, let's make it safer so that Wall Street, this big bad right. thing, can't take us down this road it took point. us in 08, then you can score points there. You know, right? I, no. never, I never understood why the Republican Party never embraced the notion that these banks are so big and so regulated, they may be really big and regulated, but they can't lend to small businesses because 
because they're so big. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, if you made them smaller, either through you know bringing back Glass Steagall or some other thing, I mean, it's, right. some, it's right. a way to make them smaller. Well, we know it's not going to be Glass right. and Steagall, right? And remember, <laughs> remember what's interesting about Glass Steagall when you yeah. put an investment bank in a commercial bank, and I could never understand why Republicans didn't jump on this. You are basically saying your commercial bank, where you have insured deposits, okay, is combined with a risk-taking entity, right. which means the feds will never let that entity go down because they would have to make up the insured deposits. Right. In a sense, the federal, the, the U.S. taxpayer is subsidizing the risk of the bank because of that deposit insurance. I never could understand why they didn't say, okay, either you want to take risk, well, you don't get the deposit insurance, or say, if you want the deposit insurance, break up. Is it, this is really interesting. So the last part I'll ask you, I want to go back to taxes for a second, because right. Blake was on, Blake Berman last right. hour, reporting on this, and there's been this talk that he's going to have Trump some new uh, tax rates unveiled, and we've heard it from the likes of Steve Moore and others saying at some point you're going to see this new tax plan. Now, from Blake's reporting, we may not see that Monday, which I thought was interesting. It almost led me to believe maybe they wanted to rush this speech out to change the subject before well, everything. Blake ready. is saying they're not going to have it Monday? Well, he, at this point, it didn't look like that may, it would be included. Now, well, it may be. But. I, well, I, what I heard is that Monday will be uh, there'll be the influence of Steve Moore in, in this speech. Right. Will be the influence of Larry Kudlow, two of his economic advisors, and Art Laffer, who are supply siders about New lower rates tax. and all that. Lower or? tax, lower rates. That the, that will be in the speech. I heard as of now. Hmm. But there'll be a Trumpian twist on it. Of course. Now, what What's that, that Trumpian twist is, I don't know. It's going to be something of his own in there. Now, my guess, if I was just to guess, game plan this out. He's going to be talking about stuff that he talked about before, which was the end of some of these loopholes for gazillionaires, like the carried interest loophole that allows private equity investors. It's a loophole that allows them, basically, they give right. them a huge tax advantage on their investments. A lot of people think you should get rid of that in the whole context of tax reform, by the way. That's not an absurd thing. It's not anti. It's not like he's looking to, to tax the rich. Right. Uh, my point is you might see something on that private, on that private equity tax uh, incentive, which is called the, it's called the, um, uh, it, it, oh, God, I'm, I'm blanking out. You're about carried, carried interest. interest. Carried yes, interest, it's, yeah. That you, my guess is you'll see something like that. Okay, so that's Monday noon, right on the show, Cabuto right. Coast to Coast. But then tonight, it's a, well, we'll see. He, if he goes through with this Ryan endorsement, you can see he's trying to get himself back. You know, Tracker's campaign is. So there you go. Better late than never. I guess. <laughs> How late is this? Thank you, Charlie. Okay.